إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا يوفون بال ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا فوقاهم الله شر ذلك وجزاهم بما صبروا جنة وحريرا متكئين فيها على الأرى Ha <laughs> ha.
ودانية عليهم ظلالها وذللا قطوفها تذليلا ويطاف عليهم قوارير من فضة قدروها تقديرا ويسقون فيها كأسا كان مزاجها عينا فيها تسمى سلسبيلا الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر إنا فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر إن فصل لربك وانحر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صدق الله العلي العظيم
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum ya Fatimatu Zahra. Assalamu alaikum ya Binta Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Binta Nabiyullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Binta Khayra Khalqillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidat Nisa'il Alameen. السلام عليك يا زوجة ولي الله السلام عليك يا أم الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة for the honor of Lady Fatima سلام الله عليها please recite another salawat على محمد وآل محمد Our condolences to the Imam of our time, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, on this night of the martyrdom of Lady Fatima Salamullah Alayha. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept all of your A'mal and mournings during this uh, Fatimiyah, inshaAllah. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, the most important one is that, inshaAllah, starting next Saturday, uh, we'll start the program with Aisha, not with Maghrib. So you may uh, pray Maghrib at home, or you can come here. Maghrib will be uh, performed here as well, but as part of the school earlier after 5 p.m. because we'll have a school here starting at 5 p.m. Otherwise, you can combine it with Aisha and, and read it here, inshallah, as well. I don't think I have uh, any other announcements uh, besides the uh, always request to uh, please donate and support our programs. Before we listen to our respected scholar, Hujatul Islam al Muslim Wadaris, one of the, our sisters, Sister Sara, will recite some poetry for us, and then inshallah we'll uh, listen to the lecture. Let's welcome Sister Sara Razavi with your loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salawat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Wahlul uqtatam min lisani yafqaw qawli. Ya Fatimah al-Zahra. Ya Bint Muhammad. Ya Qurrat Ayn al-Rasul. Ya Sayyidatana wa Mawlatana. Inna tawajjahna wa istashfa'na wa tawassalna biki ila Allah. فقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله Dear scholar, brothers, sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First and foremost, before I begin, I would like to send our condolences to the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajjallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, For the martyrdom of his beloved mother, Lady Fatima Sallallahu Alaihi please recite the loudest of your salawat. Tonight, an angel fell. Tonight, an angel fell, but not in the way you'd think. Not from heaven to earth like Fitrus, but in reverse. You'll see. It started when a father fell, with his head on Nafs's chest, with Hassanain on his chest, and smelled them as much as he could, and would never allow anyone to remove them from his chest, his chest, his chest, his breath would rise and fall, waiting for death, waiting to be lifted from this world's pain, while asking for a pen and paper, only to be called insane. His tears only to stream from his face, knowing what his family would face, looked at his angel, at his soul's soul, told her that I will be leaving, that you'll be the first one to join me very soon. 
a father fell. But tonight, a daughter stood, stood behind a door protecting, defending, guarding, shielding, reminding her of something her father once told her to make sure that Ali, her love and imam, is never left all alone. But tonight, an angel fell, a lady fell, as she tried to stop them from entering, so she was crushed between the door and wall, collapsed to the ground, bleeding on the ground, slapped and whipped on the ground, bruised, broken and blackened on the ground. The ground, the ground was a tourniquet that she bled through. The ground soaked and her blood, stained by her blood, watched her lifeless body and wounds and scars, a lady, fell onto the ground, so the ground begged God to allow it to open up once more. A wife fell. A wife fell as she saw her husband with tied ropes around his neck and hands her husband dragged around like a caged lion. A husband fell. A husband fell when he could do nothing but watch love on the floor. He remained helpless, powerless against patience as his only foe. He fell. A husband fell when all he could do was shield her with his robe, when he could have done so much more. Tonight, an angel fell. A mother fell as she turned her bones into a bunker with a nail tearing through, trying to hold on to her baby son until she could no longer. A mother fell. A son fell, no muhsin to protect his mother as he was drowned in his blood and his mother's crushed under a nail like his brother under hooves, leaving an empty cradle behind, reminding me of a scene years later. A son fell, Hassan watching his mother on the floor, watching the dust caress every wound on her, watching his house where angels sought permission turn to prison, watching his life, his mother go up in flames. A son fell. Hussein fell when he did not know what to do as he watched his father taken away and his mother on the floor, not knowing that one day, not knowing that one day he too will fall again with a knife held against his throat. A daughter fell. Zainab fell when she saw the burnt door, the door that Muhammad stood before, lit like a wild fire that sound like screams, burnt door, burnt veil, burnt tent, burnt tent. Zainab know that fire will come again. Tonight, an angel fell. A Shia fell when she heard her imam being dragged. Forgetting her own pain, she spoke in words which creatures will never understand. A Shia fell as her rights were stripped, her house attacked, her muhsin killed, and her ribs cracked because her only sin. Her only fault was only loving, supporting, staying with her imam. Tonight, an angel fell. An angel fell with Hassanain on her chest, crying, begging, Mother, please come back to us. Orphans on her chest. Her chest, her chest, her heart was only Hassan and Hussein. Her life was only Hassanain, so witness the angels above with tears like rain, begging Ali to remove them, for they can no longer bear the pain. Tonight, an angel fell. An angel fell who was cleaned and wrapped by lungs without breath, by hands who felt her broken ribs again. An angel fell. An angel fell who was lifted by hands who once lifted Khaybar, now pleading for help. An angel fell who has left Ali sleepless, his grief limitless, his life meaningless, his joy senseless. An angel fell. 
An angel fell who was buried, alone, buried, oppressed, whose grave is left hidden, though it was veiled in light, buried like rose petals by a man who no longer seemed alive. Tonight, an angel fell. An angel fell, and in silence, a man stood alone by her who responded his salams with tears. No salam. No prayer, no tasbih, and no kawthar. And Ali is now left all alone without his zahra. Tonight, an angel fell. And like the mi'raj, she ascended back. Back from where she came. For she was a fruit in heaven and an angel born on earth, whose worth by many will never be understood. She was an angel with Muhammad as one wing and Ali as the other. So know that Muhammad nor Haydar will not be here without Zahra. She was an angel raised in the arms of the Quran when Muhammad was raised in hers. She was an angel who was adored by the heavens, though she is left on the floor. She was an angel. A fallen angel with a glimpse of heaven in her eyes, with torn wings on her back that carried nations, breathing blood with her pierced womb, though eleven sparks were formed, with her voice that used to pray, now silent, with her veil and halo covered in dust and blood, she was a fallen angel that fell like meteors and flames. Tonight, an angel fell. So watch heaven shatter and fall, for it doesn't know anyone but her. Watch the world shed tears of blood, for this angel sacrificed herself so the world can live on. So tonight, a father, daughter, mother, wife, husband, sons, daughters, an angel fell. Now, nothing under the kissa is alive but the cloak. So rest and sleep, ascend to heaven where angels are meant to be. And the world, we fell, although we hope to rise, knowing that our savior, our final imam, is still here. MashaAllah, thank you so much for the beautiful poetry, Sister Sarah, for the health and well-being of our sister and her family. We saw the loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Without any further ado, let's welcome our respected scholar, Hujatul Islam wal Muslimin, Ahmad Mudarris, with your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's remember all those who are in, in need of our du'as and prayers. There is a young brother who is in the hospital and needs our du'a, inshallah. And for all the other uh, family members, community members, all the mu'mineen and mu'minat who are uh, in the hospital or dealing with illness, health issues, may Allah, inshallah, grant them shifa. An afiyat, let's exercise Surah Hamd for the shift of all of them with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ya 
Ya man ismu dawa wa dhikruhum shifa. And also let's remember all those madhlumin and oppressed in the world, especially once again because of this temporary uh, relief that they are experiencing. It doesn't mean the tragedy of thousands of children and innocent uh, lives who were lost. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the soul of all those shuhadan martyrs in Gaza and Palestine. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our dua is that anyone who is responsible for these atrocities, anyone who is supporting these atrocities, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expose them, humiliate them, and punish them in a worthy way that they are deserving of that. With the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين واللعن الدائم على عدائم عداء الله أجمعين من الآن إلى لقاء يوم الدين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم وقل لعبادي يقول التي هي أحسن إن الشيطان ينزغ بينهم إن الشيطان كان للإنسان عدوا مبينا صدق الله العلي العظيم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illuminate our hearts by the light of iman and guidance and help us to be among those who are among the righteous, pious and muttaqeen with the salawat ala muhammadan wa ala muhammad My condolences on the arrival of 13th of Jamadi al anniversary of the martyrdom of the Lady of Light, Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha. Tomorrow is the day of Shahada. Tonight is the night of the Shahada. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us a tawfiq of following the path of the Prophet and his family and his daughter, Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha to be inshallah a follower of our imam the way she was a defender and protector of her imam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant all of us the worthiness to be qualified to receive the shafa'ah and intercession of Fatima al-Zahra and the Ahlul Bayt in the Day of Judgment with another salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad There are many religious personalities, spiritual personalities in our faith, men and women, because ultimately, from the perspective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gender is not something that someone is going to be treated better by Allah or considered higher by Allah because of gender. In many verses of Quran, multiple places, Allah says that we created you from men and women, male and female, but the most noble of you before God, the most honored of you before God is the one who has higher level of taqwa, piety and virtue. In other words, your actions and your faith matters more than anything else. We believe that different genders have different responsibility. There are many responsibilities that we share but there are some who are exclusive to one. But again, that does not make them in any, one, in any sense superior to one another. Let me be clear. We live at the time of accusations and at the same time waves of challenges and doubts coming and attacking not only us as Muslim, but in general faith and religion is, is something that is usually an easy target for people. Someone consider themselves, label themselves enlightened, open-minded. One of the first thing you do on the top of your list is make fun of religion, attack it, label it, say things. And... Our responsibility 
and I want you to say it, I repeat it this many times, is not to convince everyone. Our responsibility is not to make everyone agree with us. Why? Because it's not possible. There are many people that no matter what you do, as I said before, I use this example, said we live at the time that people, there are people who believe that earth is flat. Flat earthers. Good luck convincing them, challenging them, whatever that is. Again, we have people who are against vaccines, anti-vaxxers. They don't even use basic vaccines for their kids. And I respect everyone's opinion, but the point is, it's not possible to convince everyone. And a matter that is not religion, a matter that should be much more easier to convince people. If the earth is flat or not, it should be much easy to prove it or not. And now imagine, let's talk about there is a God. There is a creator and he had a plan for us. There is a design. is much, much more abstract, much, much more complex than just the earth is flat or not. So what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to believe in what's right and maintain our own truth. We have a journey in life. And in this journey, there are moments that we may fail. There are moments that we may lose faith. Because of doubts, because of hardship. And that's why... On this journey, say if you're driving a car, there's a possibility of having a moment, a breakdown moment, right? Your, your car breaks down or you have a flat tire, you have to fix the problem in order to continue on your journey. Our faith journey has its own trouble moment as well. And that trouble moment could be, as I said, a hardship. It could be a moment of doubt, skepticism. It could be I don't know, hanging out with someone who shower us with questions after questions. We have our own challenges. And that's why Allah says one of the prayers of those who believe is Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. O Allah, our Lord, don't let our heart deviate from the truth. Don't let our souls distance itself or himself or herself from the truth. After we discovered, after we embrace guidance. So it's a possibility. So we are responsible to have answers for ourselves. So if somebody asks a question, we should be able to say, okay, this is why. If they listen to it or not, it's up to them. We show you the way you're either grateful or not is up to you, is your call. But on my end, my responsibility is to have that conviction, that certainty, that why I believe in what I believe. I'm not a blind follower. And everyone has their own journey. So one of those, as I said, common attack that comes from people who are against faith and against religion is that these personalities that you have in your faith right this is a masculine religion this is you know women have no role in this and this is a common argument I heard one way that it helps us to understand is certain key terms in Quran and key verses in Quran. Not everyone is lucky to remember many verses at the same time. Whenever you have this moment, is it this religion about men and all that? Remember what Allah says. And the ayah is from Surah Hujurat, verse 12 to 14. Whenever there's a moment that you have that accusation being thrown at you your religion is this your religion is this and they find hadith tradition some 
part of the ayah out of context or within the context. And they say, well, because of this, this is what your religion is about. My answer to them is, okay, if this is what you believe, but for me it's clear that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, Surah Hujurat once again, Allah said, Inna khalaqnakum min wa untha. I created you. Allah referred to himself as we, plural, because this is royal we. This is not God having partners or anything. Uh, in Arabic language, as it is in English language, when you refer yourself in plural, sometimes it comes from the source of authority and it comes from the position of power. So the kings in the old English language, they used to refer to themselves as we commanded this. This is what we ordered. And the word we is, could be referred to one person. In Arabic, is the same. So Allah said, inna. This is what we decreed. This is, Allah said, I made this decision. This is my design. Inna khalaqnakum. We created you. Min dhakarin wa untha. From a man and a woman. From a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا And then after this origin story that where you came from, we made you into different nations. شُعُوبًا شُعَب is a plural of different nations. وَقَبَائِل Different tribes. So ethnicity, race, culture. We see this diversity. Allah said this is what we did. It's not... Coincident. This is our design. We want it to be this way with people and differences. But the objective was لتعارفوا, that you may recognize one another. These differences was a reason for you to identify yourself. This is your culture. For example, in this culture, this is your uh, kafiya that you were in this culture. In the other culture, there were abai and uh, Ultimately, yes, there's one concept, which is the concept of hijab, but the way you maintain that hijab could be different. And that's fine. لِتَعَارَفُ You recognize one another. Same as with the ethnicity, same as with the race, the skin color, and all that. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Indeed, the most honorable of you, noble of you, is the one who has the highest status of taqwa. The one who is more virtuous, they're more God conscious. They are the one that they are akramakum indallah, before God. Among people, why is it you know, among you? Because unfortunately that's not the standard for us. For us usually if somebody is from our culture, we feel more close to them. They speak our language and some races stick together and all that, right? But before Allah said, these are irrelevant to me, Allah says. To you, it's, it's something, you prefer homogenized systems, you prefer to have this kind of shared identity and all that, that's for you. But before God, and religion is about God and His relationship with people, is that taqwa matters, piety, virtue matters. I said this because Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli has a, a book about Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah Aleha. And there's a beautiful point that he makes in that. Which I think that I read the book in the original, which was not in English, which I think the title of the book, if I translate, and I'm not sure that, I hope, inshallah, the book is available in English translation, but I'm not sure. It's called a role model for humanity. The name of the book for Fatima to Zahra is called a role model or an exemplar for humanity. And in the introduction of that book, Ayatollah Jawadi said, said Fatima to Zahra is a role model for all ages, so it's a timeless example. It's not, she's not limited to 1400 years ago. She's a role model for all places. She's not just limited to Arabia of the time. And she's also an example for all genders. She, again, is not limited to one gender. This is the terminology that he uses to describe Fatima to Zahra. And then he kind of elaborates more that because what matters about Fatima to Zahra is not physical. 
because she was only 18 years old. She did not live long among people. What matters about her, which make her stand in a pinnacle of faith, is her faith and soul, ruh. And ruh has no gender. Our soul has no gender. Bodies have gender. So, I made that to bring us to this, that when we commemorate Fatima to Zahra, salamu alayha, yes, she is a mother. She's a proud mother. She is a daughter. But we cannot limit her to these roles only. Because yes, these are qualities, by the way. But in addition to being a great mother, an honorable and a great daughter, a great wife, she is a mu'mina. She is a believer. She has that special connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point that Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he writes letter to Muawiyah, her husband, after Fatima Tuzara passed away. And this letter, by the way, is in Najul Balagh, if you want to look it up. Imagine this is now a time of politics. Muawiyah is the one claiming that you know, the reign of leadership and the rule of the ummah is in my charge and my control. And Imam Ali is, of course, opposing it. But in that letter, Imam Ali is, said, okay, let me tell you who we are, who I am and who are you. And among things that he mentioned is, this is what the word he uses. He said, Li al-fakhr bi Fatima wa abiha. My honor Iftikhar, in Farsi we use it, in Urdu there's a word iftikhar as well, is an Arabic term. Fakhr means when you boast something that you are proud of, something that you are in, in some sense bragging about. Li al-fakhr bi Fatima, the honor of Ali, the proud moment of Ali is that Fatima was the one that I live with. This should set a lot about who Fatima to Zahra Salamullah is. An imam, a proof of Allah, saying that this she is someone that I'm proud by. And it's my fakhr and honor that I was the one who lived with her. So religious personalities in our faith, men and women could be an example for all of us. It's not that Allah said, you, oh woman, look at all the prophets of God, they were men, look up to them and learn from them. But pious women are not examples for pious men. No, it's not. It's exactly opposite. When you look at the Quran, when it comes uh, to command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, oh men, oh, oh believers, regardless of your gender. Amanu, ya ayyalladheena amanu, oh believers, in that, O oh, believers, we are referring to men and women, all of them, regardless of the gender. When Allah said, O oh, believers, do this, it's not talking about only men, or only two women, it's all of them. Allah said, let me give you a uh, method, or an example, a role model that Allah wants to introduce, لِلَّذِينَ amanu to the believers, to all of them. Allah wants to give us a role model for all of us, men and women. Is who? Imra'ata Fir'aun. Fir'aun's wife. Asiya is an example. And Allah said, she's not an example only for women. It's for all of you. And you should look up to her life and learn from her. So when you look at Surah Maryam, alayha, there's lessons to be learned from Maryam, alayha. When you look at the story of Suleiman and the queen of Sheba, Bilgis, there's a lesson to be learned from her. The story of Asiya, Pharaoh's wife. And of course, when we come to the name of Fatima, we can see that one of the scholars actually wrote a book, 135 verses that directly or indirectly is about Fatima Tuzara in the Quran. 135 verses. Among them are the verses that were just recited, Surah Al-Ata, Surah Al-Insan, which is about human being. It's a very interesting naming. It's not named by the Prophet. 
The reason that this surah is called Al-Insan, a human being, is because of the usage of the word insan in the first ayah. Allah said, Hal ata ala insan Usually the namings of some chapters in the Quran is based on the a keyword at the beginning of that surah or in the story that is containing, like Surah Yusuf is about the story of Yusuf. We see that Allah reminds us of, of this family. In al abrar the righteous. Let me tell you about them. Who are they? Yufuna bin Nadr. They are the one who fulfill their vows. Wa ta'am. And they are the one who feed. They're givers. They're generous and they feed. Ala hubbihi. But the reason they feed is not out of pity. It's not out of feeling bad or they do it out of love. Love for their for their creator. Ala hubbihi. Out of love for their faith and Allah, they give, they feed. Miskinan wa yatiman wa asira. They feed the poor, the orphan, and the captive. And occasion of revelation of this surah and these ayat is about Fatima Tuzar and Ali ibn Abi Talib salam fasting for three days when their children, Hassan and Hussein, were sick. And we have Prophet and some Muslims came to visit these kids. Which again, I said, these are, has his own delicate lessons to learn as well. That visiting people is not only for elders, you know, older uh, elders or for adults. You can even go and visit children. That's a tradition. So they went to visit. And they suggested to Imam Ali alayhi salam and Fatima to Zahra that why you don't fast for, you know, make a nadr, make a vow, a pact, a, a promise to Allah that if they get better, you do nadr. They suggested it. And good suggestions should be appreciated. And they did. Amir al Mumin and Fatima to Zahra, they listened to that suggestion and they did fast. When they got better, they start fasting for three days. In three days, we have that orphan, poor, or destitute, as well as captives, in different occasions came, knocked at the door, and they shared their only meal with them. And Allah said, I'm going to acknowledge this event for multiple reasons. Number one, their niyyat. Their intention is as pure as it could get. They did it out of love. Who's saying that they did it out of love? Allah. The one who's being loved, Allah himself. Said, so I know that they did it. I'm the one that's supposed to do it for. Secondly, is that they did it when they were under pressure themselves. They didn't have a lot of food. It's not like they give the leftover or they give the 50%. They give all that they had because they didn't have much. It make their work different. Because this is not obligatory on them. Because let's say if you have need yourself, then it's not obligation on us to give what I need to someone else, right? It's not necessary. If I only have one meal and that one meal is only for me and somebody asks me for it, Islamically, because if it's only sufficient and enough for you, you don't have to give it away. It's not an obligation. But for someone in the status of Ahlul Bayt, they don't do bare minimum, remember. This is what, why they are in that status. When we praise Ahlul Bayt, some people said, no, you know, we always talk about them. The reason we talk about them is because, yes, average people around us, I'm talking about myself, I don't know about others. We usually, our greatest objective is to do our wajib and stay away from haram, bare minimum. Extra credit, extra reward is, again, once I'm done with the minimum, then I go there. But for the Ahlul Bayt, for the Prophet and his family, their level is different. The expectation from them is different. Their tests are different. And Allah acknowledges that sacrifice. Allah acknowledges that charity. So if you want to recognize religious personalities, spiritual personalities, Quran is one source to get to know them. Surah Insan is one. Suratul Kawthar, I referred to it last night, is another. 
Surah Al Imran, verses of Mubahila, when Prophet brought Fatima to Zara to represent women of his family, the only woman with him was Fatima to Zara, is another example. And there are many other ayat that we can talk about, but let's say these are few evidence of Allah talking about Fatima salamu alayha, in the Quran. Then we have a hadith and narrations. How Prophet introduced him, how Imam Ali introduced her. And I mentioned Imam Ali salam, referring to her as someone that he is honored and proud to be associated with her, not the other way around. And Prophet, again, one of the narration being narrated from Prophet's wife, Aisha, that she narrated that these are again in, exist in the book of Hadith Muslim, Shia and Sunni, that wherever Prophet was and Fatima would enter, Prophet would stand up for her out of respect. And Prophet would run or walk toward them to welcome him. And then would Prophet make him sit by his side. In other words, the ultimate level of respect that a prophet of God can give to someone, prophet would give that level of respect to Fatima. And there's more and more tradition that the time is limited, not enough to go there. And lastly, the third way to get to know a spiritual personality, Quran is one, of course, the word of the prophet, Ahlul Bayt is another, and the third is her own life, her own performance speak for itself that's how to get to know someone you know sometimes you know when people want to get married you ask around about them right what kind of person he is you ask Sheikh Madaris you ask I don't know some mutual family member or friend to, to okay who is this person right and you get some feedback who are they that's one way to get to know someone you get some kind of survey of who they are but the moment you sit with them and you talk to them, how they conduct you know, themselves and how they behave, it's much, much louder a statement than anything else. Let's say if all you heard about them is this is a person who's very respectful, is well-mannered, they are very polite. And, and the first thing you see in the first interaction with no provocation, with no reason, is that they start being very rude. All that comment, put it aside. This is a live feedback. This is... Speak for itself. You know, actions are the loudest words and a statement that we can make. So then we look at the life of Fatima, salamu alayha, and we see that what Allah says, calling her kawthar, what Rasulullah says about her, that she is reyhana, and she is a flower that Allah sent from heaven, and there's a lot of beautiful description of her, is, is truly fitting of this personality and unfortunately remember that they were not like a historian walking everywhere with them okay let's see what they're doing we're not privileged to have a lot about them not because it doesn't exist they do exist but we have no one to actually track it historians are usually hired by governments by rulers the reason for 25 years when Imam Ali salam was pushed aside and the other caliphs were in charge. We don't know a lot about Imam Ali because obviously the one in charge is going to be uh, you know, compensating and the public fund is with them and the historian is going to monitor what they're doing. Obviously. But they're just glimpses. Like when Imam Hassan Ali said that I woke up in the middle of the night as a child and I saw mom, my mom is praying. And she start praying for people around us, our neighbors. Remember, the neighbors were not some of them very good neighbors. They are the same one who complained to Imam Ali alayhi salam that Fatima is crying too much after Prophet passed away. She was grieving after the atrocities against her house and Imam Ali alayhi salam. She was grieving. She was in agony. So they came and complained to Imam Ali salam. Ya Ali, tell her Take a break. Tell her to cry at night or day. And that's why Imam Ali Salam went and built Baytul Ahzam, the house of sorrows near Baqi Cemetery for Fatima Tazar to have a place to actually grieve. And this is, by the way, accommodation of Imam Ali Salam for his wife. There's a lot to learn from that, to go out of your way to do something. 
when somebody's grieving. Fatima Zohar is praying for those neighbors, not good neighbors who were, had your back when you needed them. Neighbors that they were not decent to understand that this person just lost her father. Her house, is, the door of her house was burned down. So I should have some sympathy. I should understand why she's grieving. And it's not that long after Prophet passed away that she was crying. This is all within two months after Prophet passed away. Span of two months. But Imam Hassan said, I, I listen and Imam is praying for everyone. Naming the neighbors. And then I ask, I said, my mom, mom, when are you going to pray for us? How about us? What about us? And we have that one part that we know that she responded. Al-jar thumma dar. She answered, my dear son Hassan, first neighbors, then us. Let me finish others. Why she says that? Because this is the teaching of her father. This is the teaching of God to pray for others before you. It's actually recommended to pray for other people before asking for what we want. Why? Because Allah loved those who are generous. Allah he himself, he is the ultimate generous that we can imagine. Ajwad al And Allah appreciates to, the, to those who are grateful and they understand that okay let me instead of being selfish let me remember other people and Allah said this is the creation of mine he is my servant she is my servant and all he cares and thinks about and she cares about is other people I am the all powerful I am the all generous I will take care of his need because he thought of other people's need These are just glimpses. It's like a snapshot of a moment of her life that speaks of her soul. And let me inshallah conclude because last night I mentioned that I personally think whenever we talk about Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, if we don't learn something from them, all we praise them, all we talk about their greatness and talk about their taqwa and virtue, if at the end of the day, that does not help us to become a follower. Shia. That's the word Shia means. To follow. Shia is not the one who just loves Ahlul Bayt. That's the, the step, the beginning. But we don't stop there. There's more, right? There's more. The word Shia is actually about action. Taking steps toward the Imam, the one who leads why we have these terms, Imam, Shia, the one who leads and the one who follows, because it is about a relationship. Otherwise, sometimes I feel, you know, people, there's a lot of people who read books. I've seen people in airplane, they read books. Those who are sitting next to me, I'm not nosy, at least I don't think I am. Sometimes I just notice they're sitting next to me, what they're reading. A good number of them are reading novels, stories, majority of them fiction. Is a story, it's entertaining to them. Is it good for them? Again, their benefit for them is entertaining. It's better than staring at a, at a TV all the time and watching something. It's good reading. They create their own vision and their own you know, scenario in their mind, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's just you, it's entertainment. Sometimes this lecture could be all that is, entertainment. And that should not be the point. I'm not coming all the way to masjid to just listen and be, oh, good, good, good one. I'm entertained, like, you know, there was a good moment. It should be that, okay, this is mawaidha. This is a reminder. This is something that I can actually take an application of that in my life in some shape and form, in, in maybe a smallest amount, but it's still an inch moving toward the imam. Otherwise, if it's only entertainment, God forbid we become of those summun, bukmun, umyun, fahum la ya'gilun. 
God forbid. Ya Allah, help protect us from becoming of those. Those who are summun bukmun omyun, those who are blind, dumb, and deaf. Meaning deaf, not, not that they are, have disabilities. No, we hear, but it doesn't make me do anything. As if somebody was deaf who didn't hear it at all. Blind, not that they don't have eyes. They do, they have ability of sight. But it means I see things, but it doesn't change me. I see people... Their life crumbling before them. I see actions of people lead to the same result over and over again, but I don't learn from it. And I make the same mistake again. So that's why last night I talked about family. How important family is. How important family is to our faith and to our lives and to our spiritual journey. And among those things that last night I think I mentioned one point I think was the major one last night. That in this relation you understand when we spend time with family. Family, again I'm talking about extended and your kids and your wife and your husband, your parents, your siblings and extended family. All of them, this is family. Is that when we do that, we're not wasting our time. Remember, that is a spiritual act for us. That could be something that make me closer to Allah when I spend time with my family. That is a way that I can obey Allah's command. Clearly this is neglected when we say is a waste of time. We should change this mindset that is spending time with people, my family who have nothing interesting to share in my opinion of what interesting is, is a waste of time. It's not. One more lesson for tonight and I finish. I'm a student of this topic myself. I'm, I'm struggling with this on a daily basis. You know, when we listen to a lecture, I want you to understand. It's not as simple as, okay, this is what you have to do and you do it. Because case to case situation is different. Let's say when I do say connect with your relatives, with your family. Not every family have the same situation. We have people who have toxic family members. We have people who their family, they, are, they don't believe. They're insulting them. We have people who their family abandon them, turn away from them. When I talk about this, understand that what from this lesson can benefit you, what's fitting to you. Because the wisdom behind it is the same. The application is different. Application is different. But the concept, the lesson, the wisdom is the same. That is the moment that when you listen to a lecture, you think, okay, what can I do with this? I got this piece of information. What can I do with this? And that lesson is from Surah Isra. Let's get back to the Quran and come to the word of the Prophet and finish. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah give us a clear warning about our one of our most prominent enemies. The one who is basically a sworn enemy of human beings, humanity. And that is shaitan. Allah said, let's talk about him for a second. Verse 53 of Surah Isra. وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ Allah says to the Prophet, to, me, to his messenger, Tell my servants, communicate it to us, inshallah, we are ibadullah, we are servant of Allah. Tell them, أحسن, to speak in a manner which is best. Speak in the best manner. In other words, watch over what you say and not to be, again, bare minimum type of people. Oh, I don't curse and so I'm good. I don't cuss or I don't use vain uh, terminologies that no use the best form of speech says what's best and I come to what's best and then Allah said inna shaytana yanzagu baynahum why you tell them to have the best of words the best of conduct why because indeed shaytan 
incites ill feeling between them. Yanzago is when shaitan is trying to break apart people, turn them against each other. So this is, Allah is emphasizing, inna shaitan. This is one of the greatest objectives of shaitan. Indeed, shaitan yanzago baynum. He wants you to turn against each other, to hate one another, to, to break you apart. He doesn't want unity. He doesn't want families to be with each other. He doesn't want masjids to stay united. He doesn't want any of that. What he wants? Division, hatred. Inna shaytana kana lil insani aduwan mubina. Remember, shaytan is indeed your manifest enemy. You're clear, obvious that he's your enemy. He doesn't want what's best for you. This is lesson number two. If inshallah you have a tawfiq and I come back, maybe we can build on on this and continue on this about family because this family is evolving family is every single day we have our own challenges when you don't have uh, when you're not married you have your parents and siblings that's one dynamic once you get married that's a new dynamic with your spouse and now you have your in-laws once you have kids that's another one so that's why it's an evolving construct that every day you need to adapt to new needs of that Union, what you call it, family. What is lesson number two? The first word that Allah says, "Yaqulu lati hiya ahsan." Speak in the best manner. Why I say that? Sometimes our intentions, I think they call it hearts as well. Our hearts in this is in the right place. Sometimes. But our mouth is not. Our words are not in the right place. I can give you a long list of those moments. Somebody's heart is in the right place. Their intention is good. But the words, uh uh-uh, is opposite of their intention. And that's why our faith always talks about our speech is a gift of God. Allah gave us the ability to communicate. But at the same time, like everything else, pathology is to understand what are the diseases of this gift. Speech and communication and words are greatest gift of Allah. What make us stand unique in the comparison with many other species in the existence. But one thing about it is that it has a lot of disease when we talk. And the pathology of it is to understand what are those diseases. Among those diseases is insult. The word for it is ihana, insult. And in family, more than anywhere else, we should be aware of this danger. Because what ihana does, what insult does, yanzago baynahum, it breaks apart people. You can, people's threshold for so many things is high. If you accidentally hit them and hurt them, they have a threshold to let you go, most of the people. If you accidentally or even intentionally get into an accident, they have a threshold for it. But one thing that people have a low threshold for is insult. When you target and aim at their integrity, you aim at their honor, that's when many people don't have a threshold to tolerate. It's hurtful. Let's look at the life of the Prophet Ahlul Bayt. When I say about device, you said, okay, so what about this event is fault to me? Isn't this a divisive event to have? No, it's not. And I tell you why. The moment is divisive is that all we talk about is, is oh, the people at this time labeling them things, people, and provoke them and incite them, that become a divisive matter. But to remember a tragedy that happened, and we can learn so much from it, is not a problem. How we conduct it, how we do it, is, it makes a big difference. Our imams always objective was to avoid conflict. 
They were not embracing conflict. It was last resort. Khawarij in the time of Imam Ali alayhi salam, if you don't know about Khawarij, they were the extremists of their own time. They are the, you can see some branches of them in, in ideologies of the Salafis and uh, Daesh and all that. They were the Khawarij of the time of Imam Ali alayhi salam. They used to come to Masjid al-Kufa, which was the central government of Imam Ali salam. The place was Masjid al-Kufa. And they used to have their own prayers separately. They have a separate jama'at. Imam Ali was leading prayers and they were conducting their own jama'at. This couldn't have been more, let's call it, uh, confrontational. It could have been more oppositional. But Imam Ali salam said, let them be. If they don't want to pray behind me, it's their choice. We're not going to engage with them. This is Imam Ali said, we're, we're not looking for conflict. Imam Ali is against their ideology. Imam Ali doesn't agree what to the what they do, but we're not here to just say, okay, let's just start fighting. Until they picked up weapons, they start attacking people. They start threatening people and become violent. Then Imam Ali Salam said, "That's it. We're not going to be pacifists. We say, okay, let them just kill the innocent. We're going to watch them killing them." This is a moment we stand against them. This is a moment we face them. This is a conflict they started. Same as in the Battle of Safin. This is, by the way, this is the vision, the ideology of Ahlul Bayt. Read about the history and then you figure out it's the same among all of them. In the Battle of Safin, Imam Ali salam said, we're not going to start the battle. We're not here for the conflict. Imam sent messengers, let's not to do this. Let's put down swords. Let's settle this. Why we walk away from this? This is not something that you are qualified. I was the one, and Imam said, said, I was the one that was chosen as the fourth ruler. You believe in other three, I'm the fourth one. You don't have the right to go against me. Let's go again, according to your own standards, you have to obey me. You obey the other three, you have to obey me as well. Until they attack Imam Ali's army and killed someone, Imam didn't start the battle. Jamal, camel, Imam sent messengers. Let's not fight. Talhan, Zubair, you gave your allegiance to me. You wanted to be with me. What did I do that you broke your allegiance? Let's not do this. Let's go back. There is no consequences. Go back. No, we're here. They killed a reciter of Quran from Imam Ali's side, then Imam started. So in all the cases, Imam Ali has three major battles, not even one of them Imam started. Day of Ashura, go read about it. Who started the battle of Day of Ashura? Because shaitan wants to break apart. And Ahlul Bayt know this. So they're not going to speed up the process of the fight. Because one excuse that I've heard is, I didn't want to break things apart. They want it. So what I did, I did preemptive reactions. So before they did anything, I broke up with them. I knew that they'd sooner or later, they're going to fight with me. So I just did it. I made it easy for them. That doesn't work. Somebody's mistake does not justify your mistake. Their mistake is on them. Let them. Let them be the one to cut, the, cut ties. And this is more than ever necessary when we go to family gatherings. Please watch our tongue. And I've heard foolish comments for the, for the, I don't know, sake of it, I don't understand how somebody thinks this is a good idea to say certain words. We saw someone after six months, after a while. Oh, what happened? The first thing we say, you don't look good. You don't look good. Making fun of their appearance, make fun of their, I don't know, size. And we think it's funny. And the defense is that, you know, the people of our time, they're too sensitive. Okay, so what? They're sensitive. Who gave you the right to test their sensitivity? If they are or not, it's on them. But your words is in your control. Be aware of our words in family. 
insults in any shape and form. Somebody's kids is running around. Sometimes we don't make comments, we just look, rolling our eyes. And then the moment our masjid becomes empty, what happened? Why families are not coming? Teaching people how to raise their kids, questioning their parenthood. These are all has to be done. Yaqulu latihi ahsan. Okay, your intention is khair. You care for them and their kids. Do it right. Teach them in a best possible way. First of all, privately, not ever in public. When there's an audience for something, there's never a moment that you can build. Okay, right now, if I give a lecture, and my lecture becomes individuals, you and you and you and you, this lecture is gone. We make it personal. Same as when you try to advise someone in front of others. You single them out. And if you do it, do it right. Think about it. Read, you know, maybe it's a good idea to review our scenario. What I'm trying to do. Let me say, is it a good idea to tell them when I was a mother, I was doing a better job than you? Probably it's not a good thing to say. Say it. Say it one time with yourself and put yourself in their shoes. What if I did tell them, said, oh, I understand how hard it is to be a mother. I understand that, you know, there's a tight space. But maybe, you know, we have a classroom in the back that they can learn something as well. Maybe this is a better way to say it. But in order to come up with that, we need to think for a moment. And if we don't have it, silence is the greatest gift of God. I have nothing to say. Don't think of something to come up with. As a speaker, I tell you, the night that they tell me you have a break when Sayyid Razavian is here is the best night of my life. When he gives a lecture and I sit down and I listen, is the best night. Because I don't have to talk. Why? Because with talking comes responsibility. What I say, how is going to influence people? What are they going to learn from it? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we follow this ayah specifically. يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ To be aware of our words, to the power of our words, what it can to do to my children, the way I talk to them. You know, I was reading about this study recently, and I, again, I've been talking along, so let me finish. It was interesting, a study said, you know, they did the, the effect of words to children from their mothers and from their parents and others and teachers, and they noticed that those children that when they do something good, let's say they do something, let's say studying or helping around the house or whatever it is. There are two types of encouragement or comments that you know parents or teachers make. One is that, oh, mashallah, you're the best. You're the best child. You're great. Those who use these words, which are kind of just in some sense, idolizing them. It does not really keep them continuing on that good work. In most cases, after a while doing it, that's enough for them. That's okay, I got enough compliments, I'm the best of the best, that's it. In most cases. But they compare with those that when they do something, parents, rather than idolizing them, oh, you're the best, you're the most beautiful person, you're my prince, and all these things. And there's nothing bad about them, by the way. But I'm saying, look at the difference of words, how it affects our children. And this is a study done by not a Muslim organization. This is, they try to just observe to see the effect of on children. See, these idolizing terms in long term doesn't benefit kids. It kind of affects their ego. They make them arrogant eventually. In most cases, it makes them just indifferent to your praise. You're the best, you're the most beautiful, you're this. On the other hand, they give them these instructions. When they do something, encourage them based on their actions. Oh, you are a hard worker. What you did, you did a great job because you were a hard worker. You pay attention to details. 
Good job. You pay attention to. So you specifically talk about what was the right thing, what was the right approach they did. You make you are complimenting them on the action, not on their personality, not on their overall whole being, rather than that action. And they're sitting here listening to me. Hopefully, they're not listening as much. So you can use that for them, inshallah. It's important. Too much compliment, too much praise spoils. Too much criticism kills self-esteem. So words matter. Words matter. And please don't be scared. Children, they are very versatile. They adapt. So if you said something wrong, you say, oh, that's it. My child is going to fail. I just did too much. Calm down. Learn from your mistake next time. Being parents is about that. You learn. But our words, giving a bit of thought and saying fewer words is better rather than just going with the flow. And I finish with the Farsi one. خَاهِشَنْ جَفْزَدَ نَشِنْ بَدْتَرِنْ كَارِ گَتُو خَانَ وَدَا مِكُرَنْ جَفْزَدَگِيَ جَفْ مِگِرَ جَفْ مِهْرَبُونِ مِگِرَ دَفِي جَفْ انتقاد مِگِرَ جَفْزَدَگِي خوب نیست احساساتی عمل کردن خوب نیست صبات چیزی که انسان روی صبات انجام بده خوبه اگه یه چیزی رو توی سوشال میدیا می‌بینی یه دفعه خواهشان من دیدم مادر پدره که یه چیزی رو آنلاین می‌خونه بچه بنده خدا دیگه فردا مامانی می‌خواد اینو امتحان کنه دیگه آرام خیلی از چیزها به مرور زمانه که اتفاق می‌افته می الله سبحانه و تعالی grant all of us as i said a family who are qurrata ayun that this is inshallah a family that we can uh, be honored by them that we can raise a family who are righteous, virtuous, successful members of our community. And inshallah, they can not only live a good life themselves, they can be successful in a matter of their dunya and akhira, but also they can inshallah help others and uplift other people around them as well, inshallah. For the honor of Fatima to Zahra, I say salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In the final days of the life of Fatima to Zahra, they came at the house of Fatima, Salamullah alayha. They gathered soldiers, men, and this is the same house, by the way, that Prophet for six months after. Ayat Tathir was revealed. Innama yuridullah liyuthib ankum rits ahl al-bayt. Prophet, six months he would come to this house and recite this ayah. And announce that ahl al-bayt, my family, are inhabitants of this house. Those who are in this house. They came to the same house. They start with threats. These are part of narrations and history that we have they said if Ali doesn't come out we will burn down the house and Fatima to Zara came behind the door and said oh people you forgot that I am the daughter of your prophet have you forgotten who I am and who is this house belong to All the advices, all the words of Fatima Salamullahi did not breach the hearts of those who were adamant to take over that power and position for them was the priority more than anything else. And the words of Fatima to Zahra was not heard. They burned down the house in some narration. Another one was that they kicked the door. Close your eyes and imagine. A 
pregnant woman behind a door and the door is kicked in. And door had Fatima to Zahra. She fell on the ground. Our sister recited those poetries which are very vivid depiction of what took place. The fresh blood start to flow on the ground. And there is one thing that she said. She said, Aha kada yuf'al bibinti nabiyyik. This is what you do to the daughter of your messenger. This is how you treat her. Ya Rasulullah, how they treated your beloved father. When we say it's unforgivable, it's unforgivable in reality. To treat anyone, any woman, but in this case, for you to call yourself a Muslim, a follower of a prophet of God, and then you treat her daughter just more than a month after her father passed away. I mentioned that last night with broken ribs, with injuries, Fatima to Zahra was laying on the ground and she said her final words, her wasiyah to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ya Ali, ghassilni billayl, daffinni billayl. My dear Ali, wash me, perform the ghusl at night, shroud me and do the kafan at night and bury me in the middle of the night. And we have Ali ibn Abi Talib after the soul of Fatima departed this dunya. He was the one who washed the body of her Fatima and he cried every step of the way. And there was a moment that he called his children said, Oh Hassan, Oh Hussein, Oh Zainab, Oh Makrothim, come and say one final farewell to your dear mother. And they came and they embraced their mother. I don't know how heartbreaking was to Ali to see his orphans embracing their young mother. And in the middle of the night, they carried the body of Fatima to Zahra. A few of the companions were with Ali, alayhi salam. When they arrive at the grave, the only one who is mahram, who is a family to Fatima is Ali. The children are too young. Who can help Ali to place the body inside the grave? You've been to you've funerals, been to you've funerals, seen burials, you've seen burials that usually there's a family member who come and help you, assess you to place the body inside the ground. But Ali alone himself, he picked up the body of Fatima, but it wasn't that difficult, you know why? Because we have in the history and the narration mentioned, Nahilat al-Jism is a description of Fatima. The body of Fatima at the end was a frail body. There was not much not flesh, much flesh left, left on the body of Fatima to Zahra. This body was very light for Ali to pick up. And he placed it inside the grave. And she, he is reciting Quran, reciting Dua. We have in some places, maybe this is a description that maybe this is what Ali said. That, Ya Allah, how can I face the Messenger of God that when I married Fatima, this is not the way Fatima came to my house. Her face was, Her not, face bruised. was not bruised. Her ribs, Her ribs were not broken. Were not and now this is a way I return the Fatima to Rasulullah. But the only one who called her father was not Fatima to Zahra. The only one who called Rasulullah was not Fatima. She said, oh, this is how you treat the daughter of your prophet. But Zainab also learned from her mother in the day of Ashura when she came and she was approaching the body of her brother Abu Abdullah al Hussein. She said the same word. He said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. She also called the messenger of God. He said, this is Oh Messenger of God, my grandfather Rasulullah, the one that you see that his body is dismembered, you can see his limbs on the ground. This body without head is your beloved Hussein who is on the ground of Karbala. على القوم الظالمين وسع لم الذين ظلموا أي من غلب ينغلبون إن لله وإن إليه راجعون السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء يا بنت محمد يا قرة عين الرسول 
يا سيدتنا ومولاتنا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا ای صفای خانه من شم من پروانه من ای صفای خانه شم من پروانه رو مگردان از نگاهم همسر من یاور لحظه ای با من سخن گو از چه میگیری زمان رو لحظه ای با من سخن گو از چه میگیری زمان رو کن نگه بر اشکاهم همسر من یاور من پشت آن در سینت با میخدر تا آشنا شد سینه من در قبط کا شانه در دو بلا شد زهرا جان 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 هوری در آتش از پای تا سر آتش بر روی مار تزا شر بر روی مادر آتش حوری یسوخ در آتش از پای تا سر آتش بر روی مار تزا شر بر روی مادر آتش در سخت پر سخت یا سپیم بر سخت از آه ناگاه تمام هی در سخت در سخت پر سخت یا سپیم بر سخت از آه ناگاه 
تمام هیدر علی به سمت مسجد روونه آتیش گرفته تمام خونه مادر گرفته دامان مولا پیچید دستش به تازیونه علی به سمت مسجد آتیش گرفته مادر گرفته دامان مولا پیچید دستش به تازیونه ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن انسی شد وحید رشید شد خمید نوری که پای ظلمت به چادرش رسید کاسر با سر افتاد پشت در مادر پر پر برابر حیدر در سخت پر سخت یا سپیم بر سخت از آه ناگاه تمام حیدر سخت خونه امید پر از شراره چهره خورشید پر از ستاره این قصه دیگه تموم نمیشه این زخم دیگه دوا نداره علی به سمت مسجد روونه آتیش گرفته تموم خونه مادر گرفته دامان مولا پیچید دستش به تازیونه ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن ویلی از زهرا مظلومن گل ها نفس بریدن چشما به خون تپیدن گل ها نفس بریدن چشما به خون تپیدن خورشید آسمون و روی زمین کشیدن باله لاله زخمی و بیها از این کوچه راهی گوداله باله لاله زخمی و بیحاله از این کوچه راهی گودال کنار گودال میزن پر پر وقتی که قاتل میکش خنجر ای رود تشنه ای عشق بی سر ای بی کفنه ای 
قریب مادر قریب مادر قریب مادر قریب مادر بی تو یا زهرا بی تو یا زهرا آه از این دنیا بی تو منده مرتضایت با غم دنیا بی تو منده مرتضایت با غم دنیا برده ای با خود جانه در را شد پس از تو بی حیاتت دشمن مولا مدینه ای دیار غرب بگو به زهرا چه گذشت بگو در این وداع تخت به جان مولا چه گذشت چنین غریب و تنها وداع دل با جان را ندید کس جز مولا و ویلا و ویلا جان علی یا زهرا 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 گریه های تو در نهان دارد بی تو مولا در گلویش بستخان دارد ای در بی تاب در دل مهراب بی تو شوق پرگوشودن از جهان دارد بعد تو شیعه تا ابد به داغ قرم بعد آشناس شعله فتنه بعد تو به خیمه های کربلاز بدون کوسر با ما تشنگی آشوراست زینب از این پس تنها و ویلا و ویلا جان علی آ زهرا جان علی آ زهرا جان علی یا زهرا جان علی یا زهرا جان علی یا زهرا سخت است روزه زهرا ماجرایش در سقیف بین بیعت ها قاتل زهراز بنده بوت هاست نام سلمان نام نحسش تا عبد رسواز قاتل, قاتل جان ما شده حال غریبان تو بشکن ادان بطر نفاق که زد در خانه تو چشمه کوسر زهرا جان پیمبر زهرا شهید حیدر زهرا و ویلا و ویلا شهید حیدر زهرا شهید حیدر 
زهرا شهید زهرا شهید هیدر زهرا شهید هیدر زهرا شهید هیدر شهید هیدر زهرا شهید هیدر زهرا شهید هیدر زهرا شهید هیدر یا زهرا 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 یا یا علی یا علی یا علی یا زینب یا زینب یا زینب اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا دردها را دبا کند درد ها را دبا کند زهرا همه با هم که اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا درد ها را دبا کند زهرا درد ها را دبا کند چقدر حاجت گرفتی از حضرت زهرا بلند بخون اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا دردها را دوا کند زهرا دردها را دوا کند نه عجب به شن او گوید خاک را کیمیا کند زهرا خاک را کیمیا کند اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا درد ها را دوا کند درد ها را مه از نور او بزو دارد ما از مهر شاب رو دارد به همه هستی حسین سوگند هر چه دارد حسین از او دارد هر چه دارد حسین از او دارد اگر نگاهی به ما کند دردها را دبا کند روز محشر که از شفاعت خیش هشت دیگر بپا کند 
زهرا عشر دیگر بپا کند زهرا همچو مرغی که دانه بر چیند دوستان را سوا کند زهرا دوستان را سوا کند زهرا کم مخواه از عطای بسیارش کان چه خواهی عطا کند زهرا کان چه خواهی عطا کند زهرا اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا دوا کند زهرا دردها را دوا کند زهرا بزعه مصطفی بود زان رو جلوهی چون مصطفی کند زهرا جلوه چون مصطفی کند زهرا اگر نگاهی به ما کند زهرا به فاطمت و عبیها و بعلها و بنیها و سر المستودع فیها به عدد ما احاط بهی علمک ده مرتبه یا الله یا الله و یا الله و یا الله یا الله و یا الله و يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك إلهي يا حميد بحق محمد يا علي بحق علي يا فاطر السماوات بحق فاطمة يا محسن بحق الحسن يا قديم الإحسان بحق الحسين اللهم عجل وليك الفرج والعافية والناس ومد في عمره وزين الأرض بالطول بقائه وجعلنا من عوانه وانصاره اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء من هو الأموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيات إنك على كل شيء قدير صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله يا نبي الله يا خير خلق الله يا خاتم النبيين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين ويا إمام المتقين عليه ابن أبي طالب السلام عليك يا بضعة الطاهرة يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة السلام على إمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي العسكري والحجة بن الحسن القائم المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم 
وعلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ولشفاء مرضانا رحم الله لمن قرأ الفاتحة